blurs of red and yellow zipping across the screen, and plenty of awkward leather suits. Over the course of the series, tons of speedsters have appeared on The Flash. Some of their debuts were totally welcomed by fans, and they presented a new level of fast. Others left a lot to be desired. You know who we're talking about. All of this is great and all, but ranking them is a whole other challenge. Let's put it this way, the top speedster its not who you think. Eliza Harmon was a simple, hard-working lab assistant before a test of V9 turned her into a speedster. Unfortunately for her, the effects of Velocity 9 were imperfect and caused a bit of an identity crisis in her mind. Her personality split and she became Trajectory. Yeah, it's a silly name, but we're not here to judge her on her name. Harmon accomplished a lot in her short time as a speedster. Sadly, she didn't really show a natural ability for it. Trajectory was pure scientific experimentation. Eliza Harmon barely qualifies as a speedster to make this list. It's like giving credit to Dave Navarro for being a part of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Sure, one album is one album, but that is the bare minimum, man. Trajectory was defeated by her own inability to handle all that raw speed. She was barely faster than a slower version of Barry Allen, and it cost her everything. She did go out in a bolt of glory, which gives her some real street cred. However, the Flash wasn't even close to his current speed at the time. We think it's pretty fair to put her at the bottom of these rankings for that reason alone. Edward Claris is a man of mystery. It's not clear how he was connected with the Speed Force, but somehow, some way, it happened. The worst part is, he's probably the worst of the natural born speedsters. Eddie, man, you really gotta stop challenging people to races that you're not gonna win. Claris was introduced in the Flashpoint timeline as the main opposition to Wally West. He was called the rival despite the fact that he claimed that no one could rival him. Talk about a severe case of mixed messaging. It's like he got his concept from the whole who's on first skit. Wally West's rival is the rival, but the rival claims to have no rival. Tell us that didn't make your head spin. Regardless, Claris was always a sore loser, but proved time and time again that his speed was just not up to par. He lost races to Kid Flash and Flash. He's like a sports team in perpetual disrepair. He thinks every new season is going to be the big one, but keep dreaming, Claris. You'll always have the big moments before the sawmill, but even those can't make up for the L's you took. You didn't need the comics to know that Jesse Wells was going to become a metahuman. Harrison Wells literally called her Jesse Quick. Talk about an obvious hint towards her destiny in the show. All that being said, it was nice to watch her slowly learn to grasp her powers. Fans don't see much of her anymore, but she definitely left her mark. For a while, Jesse Quick was the new young hero that everyone got all excited about. Fans were hoping that she could offer a refreshing outlook on a team that was starting to get super depressing. Unfortunately, the character arc never materialized and Quick found herself quickly playing second fiddle in every episode. All this eventually affected her place in the speed ranking. This list is about speed. Jesse Quick has some fantastic stamina, but her top speed is actually considerably slower than Barry Allen and other members of Team Flash. A considerable part of that is her lack of exposure to the speed force and the way that she is just cast aside by the scriptwriters. For all we know, she is much faster now. However, all viewers get now from Jesse Quick is a quick appearance or a brief mention. It was tough figuring out where to put Jay Garrick on this list. After all, the man is the original speedster, he's the classic Flash with all the retro appeal that fans of the comics know and love. Still, despite the admiration, it's hard to gauge where he fits in this lineup. Garrick is nearing retirement by the time he's introduced to audiences. His body can't keep up with his powers like it used to in the old days. Still, the dude occasionally shows up and gives us a glimpse of serious speed. He's able to jump into the speed force just like Barry Allen, and we get the impression that he was faster at one point. However, we can't count what we don't see. I mean, you know what we mean. Jay Garrick shows off an immense amount of knowledge regarding the Speed Force. It's clear he's spent some time in there before and knows all the tricks of being a speedster. It's a big reason why he's above Jesse Quick on this list. He's shown just a little more season speed and the ability to meet those higher levels. Fast is fast and Jay Garrick knows how to keep going despite all the mileage. If there was a soul-searching list, Wally West would be at the top without a doubt. 
He's been called the second fastest man alive, and at this point, he's actually starting to look that way. However, there are a lot of defeated speedster villains that Wally West was no match for, so keep that in mind. Wally is a frustrating enigma that we've been trying to crack every season. Every time he shows up, he is way faster than he previously was. He's like the friend who shows up to all your parties with homemade bean dip that slowly gets better over time. You don't know how he's getting the time to practice, yet he somehow comes up with ways to keep improving it. It's a weird metaphor, but it's the only way to explain this irrational phenomenon. We don't blame the Kid Flash for always disappearing. A lot is going on behind the scenes to make that happen. It just makes it hard to measure his real speed. Barry claims that Wally is as fast as him at one point, but the evidence just isn't there. I mean, Savitar still defeated the two of them, and it wasn't even a contest. We want to believe that Wally's the second fastest, believe me, we really do. The proof just isn't in the pudding quite yet. Remember that one scene in Back to the Future? You know the one. Yeah, that's the one. Well, that's probably how Zoom felt when he first realized that he could travel through dimensions. The dude is basically Barry and Cisco mixed into one supervillain. It takes excellent speed and power to make that happen. This entry is only regarding Hunter Zolomon as his time as the fake Jay Garrick in Zoom. After all, this is his true self. He was turned into a speedster by his electric shock therapy that was accidentally mixed with dark matter. <laughs> yeah. He may not be the fastest villain, but he sure is the darkest. We're surprised that he didn't end up with a damage tattoo on his forehead. Oh god, the memories we wish we could erase. Despite all the speed and rage, Hunter Zolomon was still just a rat in a cage compared to the Scarlet Speedster. No amount of V9 and power stealing was going to change that fact. It was fun to watch Barry attempt to outrun Zoom for a while, but apparently Hunter's bad childhood was his downfall. Honestly, it's still not totally clear what kept him from gaining speed, but it's still canon, hence his placement on this list. Fans were so eager to see the true identity of Savitar be revealed, theories were swarming around the web. Every answer was acceptable as long as it turned out that this heap of Decepticon reject wasn't just an original villain. No one wanted Savitar to just be Savitar. There needed to be more there. Then we found out it was one of Barry Allen's time remnants. And people are still lukewarm? Maybe? For all his powers and stature, Savitar is so underwhelming, it feels weird giving him such a high spot on this list, but he clearly earned it. It feels like the show spent way too much time telling us how bad Savitar was and not enough time actually showing off all the powers the guy possessed. They called him the God of Speed. If he's that almighty, he should be the number one entry here, but he's not. The Flash beat him, and other villains honestly seem faster. Maybe it's wrong. He's fast as all get out, but faster moments have happened. Yes, he's technically future Barry Allen, but current Barry Allen is faster than him now. Which means the speedsters that the Flash has faced since Savitar's defeat are far quicker than him. At least we think that makes sense. Gosh, time travel is really confusing, guys. Speaking of time travel, here comes the walking paradox that is Eobard Thawne. Nothing about this character's place in the timeline makes sense. It gives us a headache just trying to sort his life out. At this point, Thawne lives just to make life harder for Barry. There is no other purpose for this villain to be alive. The wild thing about the Reverse Flash is the way that he accesses his speed. Unlike every other speedster on this list, he uses a negative version of the Speed Force. In fact, Thawne actually created this negative energy to counter the speed of Barry Allen. It's not clear how he's able to do that, but we imagine it takes some serious speedster credentials to make it happen. On top of all this, the paradox of Thawne's existence means he's always able to match Flash's speed for a time. Eventually, Barry outruns his arch nemesis, but then that error in the time loop is always corrected somehow. Each time the reverse Flash makes an appearance out of his loop, he matches the speed of his mortal enemy. It's only a matter of time until he moves up this list again. Now, now, calm down, comment section. We're not buying into this whole Barry's the fastest speedster narrative. The only fact that we know is that the potential for improvement is unlimited. So yes, at some point, Barry is going to end up at the top of the ranks, but we just don't think he's there yet. The Flash is constantly finding ways to pick up more speed and overcome challengers. He can outgain Zoom, Savitar, 
Nora, and Wally with only a few speed bumps along the way. He's the titular character, and his powers are unmatched by every other speedster out there. The only person who comes close to his speed is Eobard Thawne, and we just went over why that's the case. Back in the early days of the show, it was a big deal for Barry to reach Mach 2. Now he does that in his sleep. The progress from day one to now is incredible to look back on. No one disagrees that Barry Allen is the fastest man alive. We're not disagreeing with that idea. The point is, Barry Allen will be faster than our number one soon. But that's not the case right now. Sorry Flash fans, but it's time to admit the real number one. We said Barry Allen is the fastest man alive. That doesn't include Black Flash in that list. The only thing slowing down this character is the show's writing. He is shown as a severe danger to both Thawne and Allen on numerous occasions. We've seen Black Flash race toe to toe with the two best and barely flinch. Basically the ghost of Hunter Zolomon is the physical embodiment of the Speed Force, making him the peak speedster in our minds. There's no brain behind the operating system making Black Flash pure, unhinged speed. So the one thing hurting this entry is the fact that we've seen Black Flash defeated by Killer Frost. Killer Frost of all people. It seems the only way to get rid of this speedster is to trap it. Black Flash is basically the least intelligent character on this list, but that's because he's pure instinct. While it is clearly a weakness, it's also a strength that gives Black Flash the honor of fastest speedster in the show. There's plenty of controversy here, but this is the real way these characters should be ranked. Jay Garrick should be ahead of Jesse Quick, and Thawne takes a top villain spot. If you disagree, tell us about it in the comments section down below. Did we miss a speedster you wanted on the list? There's always a chance we'll revisit the topic on a later video, so be sure to give us a like on this video and subscribe to more from The Binger. There's always more Flash content where this came from. Thanks for watching.